Preparing to delve in three, two, one. So I think I understand everything about the game jam itself. Uh, but I believe uh, that there was something else that we have to talk about, which is under the floorboards. Oh yeah, that thing. Tell me what that is, please. In February, there was a, a Kickstarter um, event called Zine Quest, where lots of people did small Kickstarters for small role-playing game zines, which are little, you know, paper-bound booklets of about 20 pages or so. Uh, and I had the idea to do a role-playing game based on The Borrowers, where you are tiny people in a giant hostile world. And under the floorboards is is that game basically. Um, it got funded on Kickstarter back in February or March. I think it was funded within four hours. Unreal, didn't expect that. And then uh, I'm basically finishing it up. It was meant to be out at the beginning of this month. Uh, obviously, you know, gestures at the world. It got, it's, it's been pushed back a little. So I'm going to attempt to have it released before the end of June in PDF, and then. The main reason I want to get it done is because I have to print and ship 300 copies of this thing, and I have the next two weeks off work, so it's an ideal time to get it done. The borrowers. Like, I get it, but what was the brain flash that said, hey, this is, this is the thing I'm going to do now? Honestly, like with a lot of my ideas, it was literally, oh, I say a lot of my ideas, a lot of the things that I do... Literally, someone on Twitter said the words, The Borrowers, the RPG, and my brain went, yes, do that. And so I, so I did, and then Zine Quest popped up, and I was like, shit, this is, this is an excuse for me to do Zine Quest. I wrote the entire game uh, in the week between having the idea, or I've been given the idea, I can't take credit for having the idea, uh, and launching the Kickstarter, and then... Uh, I've had to do some more writing between then and now because of stretch goals and things like that. And now I'm just I'm just working on nailing the layout and getting it all ready to ship and everything. All the stuff that I really enjoy when I'm I'm in the mood for it and really despise when I'm not in the mood for it. But uh, I'm really excited to get it released. Like it's the first game that first thing I've done that I've been able to like commission proper artwork for, and yeah, it's it's going to be good. What what are the uh, basic mechanics for under the floorboards? It's Really, really simple, um, like as simple as I could possibly make it, 2d6 plus ability, roll over a target number, that's it. It's um, very, very rules light. Oh, good. Um, you'll appreciate it, the, the core stats, like it doesn't, it's not a game that particularly needs core stats, but I come from a, a D&D background, and you know D&D has your strength and your constitution, etc. Uh, literally the only reason there are core stats is because I wanted the initial, the letters, like the first letter of each start to spell out the word scarper because you are very small people yeah i do like it when a system uh goes to the trouble of creating like an acronym for the stats that's the only reason there are seven core stats in the game and the way the way the rules are designed you very likely might you might not even roll the dice at all during the game but they're there because i wanted them to be there is there a lot of borrowing going on in the game very much so um you are borrowers <laughs> And the entire the entire game is that you are heading out into the house that you live in to to borrow something, and the whole game is your expedition and the act of borrowing and getting it back home without being seen. So it's a little bit like a stealth game. Yeah, um, but you're tiny. Okay, so I'm like I'm like Sam Fisher, but I'm I'm small. Yeah, and you get okay, to you, so you climb up Fisher. climb up curtains and. And evade cats and steal springs from mouse traps to make bouncy shoes out of. Grapple up and down things with safety pins and spools of sewing thread. Terrific. You see, if that was in Splinter Cell, would have made the game <laughs> so much better. <laughs> I could just see a version of that that would have been so much better. It was so serious. They really needed right. the springs on the shoes. I mean, every game needs a shrink ray. Every computer game needs a shrink ray in it. That's, I, Duke Nukem 3D taught me that back in the 90s. Na name a computer game that wouldn't be made better by the addition of a shrink ray and a jetpack. This is why Ratchet & Clank was so great. Because it, it begged to ask you questions like, 
What do you mean you don't want a disco bomb? What if you had a, a projectile that just makes a giant disco ball, and then ev all of the enemies just have to stop and dance, and they can't attack you while they're doing it? Exactly. So, springs on shoes, and shrink rays. I feel like some people may be a little bit confused when they uh, go to look up under the floorboards and go, I don't see a shrink ray or a disco ball in this. What's going on? No, but they could they could easily put them in themselves, and then you can make your tiny borrower people even tinier. Honey, I shrunk the borrowers. Honey, I shrunk the borrowers, and then it becomes yeah. um, Fantastic Voyage or Inner Space. That's movieception right there. I do feel like though, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, um, if I were submitting something for uh, the Game Jam, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids does seem like it would be on brand for me. That would probably work in the Ratchet and Lone system as well. It'd be kind of definitely the looter end of interpreting it, but actually it totally works. I could just, uh, like, try to fend off yeah. a giant ant. 100% work. Yeah. Or feet. You gotta avoid feet for a large part <laughs> of that game. I would be very... I, I think I actually would be kind of terrified by being stepped on. <laughs> I think it's a legit fear. Yeah. I don't want to be stepped on by a giant. We've explored a lot of things on this episode, I think. I feel like we did. Do you think we explored a lot of stuff on this episode, Chris? It definitely went on a journey, this episode. I don't know whether any useful information was conveyed to anyone, but I'm okay with that, frankly. Um, am I right in thinking that we obviously we met doing the Open Legend audition? Yes, yes we did. Yes, we did, did you have a lot of bombs? Um, uh, so there is a legend in the Delve uh, canon, the lore of the show, of a man called Josiah Puffy Pants. <laughs> I remember. Now it's ringing a bell. So Josiah Puffy Pants was uh, literally just a, a, a makeshift character that I had created when we were talking about something early on in the, the history of the show. And um, I just imagined him as almost like a piratey kind of character that had these very puffy pants, and he used the puffy pants to hold a bunch of bombs, put all the bombs in pants, and uh, then he could just pull them out at a moment's notice. That's why his pants were puffy. That makes sense. I mean, it made sense to me. So anyway, yes, that, in, in that open legend trial, <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll play uh, Josiah, see how that works out. <laughs> And uh, I think, in very much uh, the fashion that you would imagine, Josiah blew everybody up. I was the only survivor, I seem to remember. You were Josiah-proof. Yep. Extremely lucky. That game was an experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> lost to the ages. Also a lost recording, folks. <laughs> That's not available either. That's not available anywhere. That's not available anywhere. You can't find it. And that's too bad. Oh man. That was a that was a fun group too. I love I can't I can't remember her name now. Who had like the uh, the Girl Scout who was trying to get merit badges every time we did anything in the game. God <laughs> yeah. She was game. amazing. Yes, that was I awesome. I can't remember what her yes, name was either. Was awesome. I love that so much. I just got into a habit where every time we would meet a new character in this, like, Wild West town, I just accused them of being the Viper. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we're not doing any kind of questions to figure out, like, who the, who the, bad, uh... the bad guy is. I'm just going to walk up to every single person I found. Are you it? Are you them? <laughs> Are you oh, the Viper? This story is going to alienate so much of your listeners. <laughs> <laughs> That's Probably. what editing's for. That yeah. is what editing's for. <laughs> I think that at this point they're pretty much aware of who I am. Um, <laughs> That's fair. Because we did we did a live play, so they've already heard Snowball the Rainbow Unicorn Detective. So, Fantastic. Yeah. So we we've already done that. I did have to say that we had a callback to that actually, Chris, on that episode, because when we did that live play, uh, James, who who was uh, uh, running the game. The organization that we were working for was helmed by, uh, it was Josiah Puffy Pants. Fantastic. So, anyway, there's our digression for the day, folks. You knew, <laughs> you knew it was going to get there. But uh, to, to circle back, oh my god, I'm the guy that says circle back. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now that I've become that guy, uh, oh, I must have lost you. Sorry. Oh, I think I lost you. Okay. 
Well, someone lost somebody. I feel like that's the theme of this episode. Is who lost who? It's not. It's not who found who. It's who lost who. Who oh, lost is that the title of the episode? Yes. Who lost who? Maybe here it's about the friends we lost along the way, right? Yes. That's the title. The friends we lost along the way is the title of the episode. <laughs> the friends we lost along the way. Perfect. So you know. We learned about uh, tardigrades. Oh, no, I guess they didn't really learn about tardigrades at all. They didn't hear that part. No. Uh, yeah, a lot of you out there uh, actually did miss out on a lot of things. I can't help you. I wish I could. Maybe one day I will. Maybe we'll figure out how to recover that. I don't know. We started real strong on this episode, and we went sideways. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, if uh, anyone wants to find out more information about Loot the Room, where could they go? Uh, so they could go to Loot the Room, which is lootheroom.uk, uh, or they could come and follow me on Twitter at Pangalactic, where I shout into the void and hope that it shouts back sometimes. That's right. No gargle blasters required. And uh, one more time, too, uh, if anyone wants to check out the Game Jam, the website for that is itch.io slash jam slash wretched dash jam. And uh, Matt, if anyone wants to find out more information about uh, sealed libraries or the uh, things that you are working on right now, where could they go? Certainly. Um, it's sealedlibrary.com, and there is, in fact, a uh, sealed library Twitter, which is just at sealed library. Uh, so a lot of places for all of you to go uh, after you're done listening to this episode. And, of course, if you want to find more information about Delve, you can go to delvecast.com and feel free to check out our Patreon while you are there. Uh, right now, this month at least, we are uh, rolling out the four-part uh, one-shot that Alex did with Bo Severson and um, David Somerville. Uh, and so that's worth checking out over there. Thank you to our Shining Level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick. Uh, and, of course, uh, another big honorary mention to Drunk Paul, uh, who is, well, I mean, the title says it all, but uh, who helped us boost our Discord server. So thank you for that. And, of course, you can find all of us on Twitter. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Dell Podcast. And you can find it all over the internet as well on every podcast app known to mankind. You, you, you find one of them, we're there. In fact, I tell you what, I, I, dare, I dare you, listen, I, I love when I get to dare people <laughs> who are listening to the show, I dare you to find a podcast app that we are not on. If you find it, let me know, and I will, I will make that not be the case. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just being so obstinate towards people who are listening to this show right now. It must be my person. It's too much Josiah Puppy uh, Pants. Because the world has made it so it's hard for you to Josiah. record. So uh, I want to just, again, thank uh, Chris Bissett for coming on the show first. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. This is the, the third time, so I think your contract is officially up for renewal. You, you now get to renegotiate if you ever want to come back on. Demand high, Chris. Demand high. Yeah. Uh, no, do you know what? I'll, I'll come back on. It's always a fun time. I mean, I have some Skittles for oh, you. I do you like want. Skittles. I lied. I don't have skills. God damn. Anyway, Matt, thank you for joining us for your very first time. You have a couple episodes before you're out of the contract and can renegotiate. I'm sorry. To talk about if you bring me back next week. You've, you, it's, it's, got, it's got to be a while. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, there's a certain window. There's a time frame. And uh, so for everyone here at Delve, uh, which is uh, me, and also Alex, but he's actually probably doing something... <laughs> on stream oh yeah and make sure to check out uh, exp limited on twitch as well because he's doing a lot of game streams right now so that's worth checking out uh and uh so from all of us here on delve thank you for joining us and we will see you in the next episode bye everybody so i'm looking at issue one of warlock in fantasy magazine and it the introduction kind of mirrors what we've just been saying uh, it says, when we first came up with the idea of putting an adventure game into book format, little did we know that we would start a whole new craze, and that's kind of what happened with The Wretched and Alone. Yeah, Except it's on a much smaller scale. They've re they released this magazine, and then immediately spent half the magazine reprinting The Warlock of Firetop Mountain, I guess because they didn't have enough material for a full magazine.
Is that one of those magazines that now early copies are worth like hundreds of pounds on eBay? So I've got issue one at home, which is what I'm looking at, and there's only 13 issues of it. And I just looked on eBay to see how much a full run of them is, and it's like 300 pounds for all of them. Ooh. Oh my. Nathan's back. Oh yeah. Hey. Hello. <laughs> I was I was back. I was like, oh, well, I don't know if they can hear me. I can't hear them, but I'm gonna try to fix this problem. But then. <laughs> Then I came back in and I'm like, oh wait, what are they talking about? This is interesting. I'm gonna... <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> well, I've recorded it, so you've got it. But I send this to yeah. you. <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you are you alive? Blink once Hello? for yes, twice for no. Ooh. Weird. The world does not want Nathan to record a podcast today. What you could do is, if you need us to like be saying things that we're not saying, you could just chop words out of everything we've said, and oh, yeah. yeah, you've got time to do that, right? Yeah. You can have, you can make us say anything. Our, yeah. our careers are in your hands right now. <laughs>